Hello, I hope you're doing fantastic. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about programming syntax. We'll be introducing some of the basic programming syntax that you'll be using every time you write a sketch. Specifically, we'll be talking about what programming syntax is, comments, the semicolon, keywords, function syntax, and then layout and indenting. What is programming syntax? That is a good question. So I like to use this analogy. You can think of programming syntax like the punctuation and grammar of computer programming. So if you've ever read a book, then you're probably really familiar with written punctuation and grammar. For example, if you think of a period or a comma or a dash or a semi semicolon, these are all used when we write words down on paper. So languages also have verbs and nouns and diphthongs and all types of crazy grammar that goes with them. And the punctuation and grammar that you're familiar with are tools that help us communicate effectively with one another in the written word. You know, commas that convey a pause, periods let us know a sentence is ended, italics and bolded text let us know if a word's emphasized. So when we're communicating to another person, these are tools that help us do so. Now, just like written sentences, need to have correct grammar and punctuation to be correct, the same is true for programming languages. With programming, however, in most cases, we're communicating with the compiler, the program that's going to look at our code and create machine language for us. So the programming syntax that we use is meant to communicate our intent to the compiler program. So for this reason, Programming syntax is an exacting and precise exercise. You can get away with messing up some grammar and punctuation when you're writing to a friend or to some audience. They'll probably understand what your intent is. But if you make an error in your programming syntax, there's almost assuredly going to be an issue. Either a compiler error when you go to compile the code, or a subtle and hard to find bug in the actual operation of your sketch. When you start out, you'll likely find that getting all the programming syntax correct is a major hassle. It just doesn't feel natural, really. And the compiler is far worse than most elementary school teachers. They are like red pen crazy. But as you get more comfortable in the programming language, the syntax will come more naturally to you, and it will just come second nature, second hand to you as you write your code. So let's start with one of the most important tools in programming, the comment. Now, comments are descriptive statements that are written to help you and other people understand the code that you've written. So comments really are syntax and punctuation that have nothing to do with the compiler. In fact, the whole purpose of a comment is so you can hide these words from the compiler. Now, there's two ways to create a comment. The first is the single line comment using a double forward slash, something like this. Notice that all the text after the double forward slash is grayed out. Now, if you have a lot to say, then you can use a multi-line comment. Uh, to start a multi-line comment, you type a forward slash followed by an asterisk. So now you can type multiple lines of comments, and you'll notice that they're all grayed out. And you'll notice that when I press the Enter key after that first line, the Arduino IDE actually auto-closes the comment for me. And it closes it with an asterisk and another forward slash. Now these little asterisks here, they're not required, but they are added by the Arduino IDE just to let people know, or just to kind of make the comment, the multi-line comment, stand out. Now, like I said, comments are hidden from the compiler, and they're words specifically for the human or cyborg or alien or whatever that are reading your code. Now, I won't go into the substance of comments right now. You'll learn more about what comments should say as you work through the course, but I will say that comments should be descriptive statements about what the code you are writing will do. The next thing I want to talk about is the semicolon. The semicolon is to the C++ programming language as the period is to the English language. The semicolon lets the compiler know that you've finished a statement of computer code. Let's take this line of code. I know right now it means nothing to you, but what's important to notice is that at its end there's a semicolon. And the semicolon lets the compiler know 
that your next line of code is independent from the previous one. Now, if you wanted, you could move the semicolon to the next line of code or make spaces after the semicolon. It wouldn't make a difference. Now, this is horrible form, and you really should keep your semicolon on the same line of code that it ends. But what this demonstrates is that the compiler is ignoring the spaces before and after the semicolon. Now, if you forget to type a semicolon and you compile your sketch, you may get several, several different types of errors. So here you can see I took out the semicolon from this line of code. I've compiled the code using the verify button and the message bar says expected unqualified ID before numeric constant. What does that mean? Well, let's look down into the error and see what it actually says. So if we look through these error messages, we can see that it's referring to the name of the program. Then it points out a line of code. It's saying co uh, line 12. Then it says expected comma or semicolon before void. So if we come up here, to line, here's line 12, it says, hey, there's void, and it's saying it expected a comma or a semicolon. So now we can kind of trace back our steps and say, oh, you know what? This finished line of code, let me put my semicolon. If I compile it now, then it compiles just fine. Now, as far as errors go, these are pretty darn descriptive. They tell you what line of code to look at, and they even tell you what you forgot. So in many cases, error codes are not nearly this informative. So it's pretty handy. Now, you might have noticed that some of the words typed into the Arduino IDE change color. What are the, what's the deal with this? Well, these are called keywords. And keywords are specially designated terms in a programming language. Now, as we've already said, they get highlighted automatically by the Arduino IDE. Now, these keywords, they perform specific functions for us. And so they're reserved for use for that reason. Now you'll get very familiar with different keywords as you work through the course. So we won't go in depth in describing every keyword. And again, you'll know when you've typed a keyword because it will change color. The next thing I wanna talk about are functions. Keep in mind that this is a very cursory overview of functions. I wanna give you a general kind of gist of what a function does. So functions are programming tools that package up frequently used pieces of code and make them easy to use. Let's say, for example, that you had some code that did a calculation and converted degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe it was a couple lines of code, but you found yourself that you're using that code pretty frequently. So instead of having to type that code into the program every time you wanted to do the calculation, you could turn it into a function. To use a function, all you have to do is write the name of the function, give it some pieces of information so that it can do the job. For example, if it was a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter, you'd have to give it the temperature in Celsius and it would give you back the value in Fahrenheit. So the Arduino language has tons of built-in functions and just like keywords, they also change color automatically when you type them. So functions are kind of like the verbs of a programming language. They actually make things happen and they do stuff for us. Now the real reason I brought functions up isn't because I want to explain how they work because we'll be working in detail, learning about all different types of functions throughout the course. But what I wanna talk about is some function syntax. All functions are followed by an opening and closing parentheses. And inside these parentheses is where you give the function what it needs to perform its task. If the function needs multiple pieces of information, those items are separated by commas. Now, some functions don't take any data, but they still have a pair of parentheses. And every open parenthesis must have a closing parenthesis. Also, notice when I put my cursor in a parenthesis that the closing parenthesis is highlighted. Likewise, if I put my cursor by the closing parenthesis, the opening parenthesis is highlighted. This can be a handy tool to determine if you've actually closed the parenthesis after you opened it, or vice versa. Some functions, called control structures, which we'll be learning a whole bunch about, also have opening and closing curly brackets following the parentheses. So the code that goes between these opening and closing curly brackets will get executed under different circumstances. So just like with the parentheses, every open curly bracket must have a closing curly bracket. And just like parentheses, if you put your cursor by one of the curly brackets, it will highlight the partner of that curly bracket. You may also have noticed that there is indentation in these lines of code. Now this indentation it doesn't communicate anything at all to the compiler, but it helps the author of the code and other people who read the code navigate through what you've written. As a general rule of thumb, when you're writing code inside opening and closing curly brackets of a control structure, 
then the code is usually intended two spaces from the rest of that code. And then that indentation continues if a new set of curly brackets is opened up. Another tool for indenting is the auto format tool in the Arduino IDE. And so all you do is you go up to tools, auto format, or you can just press command T and it will automatically do all that indenting stuff for you. So that's handy to use if you don't want to mess with it or if all the code's kind of looking sloppy. It will do that auto format. So let's do a quick review. We talked about what programming syntax is. You know, we said that programming syntax is like punctuation and grammar for computer programming languages. We talked about comments, the single comment or the single line comment and the multi-line comment. We talked about the semicolon, how it's kind of like the period of the Arduino programming language or the C++ programming language. We talked about keywords, the coloring of keywords. We talked about some of the function syntax. And then finally, we talked about layout indenting. That's it for this lesson. Again, this was just a cursory look at this stuff. Don't worry about memorizing every last bit. Or if you don't, you're not sure what some of the code we were typing was, that's not the expectation right now. Really, we just want to get our eyes inside the Arduino IDE and maybe start understanding some of the symbols that are being used and maybe understand what, what some of that coloring and stuff means. All right, look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye.